There's an article in the Times of Israel today, and it says, Has Israel got the six-year itch with Netanyahu? And one of the things that it says is that a lot of people, and I'm going to put this in basically my own words, but a lot of people, and it's also in another Times of Israel headline or a Jerusalem Post headline or something along those lines, but they say, like, they really don't like Netanyahu, but they feel like, okay, well, he's the incumbent, so we might as well go with the incumbent as opposed to whoever else could be whatever kind of disaster, because it might seem like six one way, half a dozen the other way. So, you got to ask yourself, would you rather have what's basically history repeating itself, or would you rather give a chance for Islam to actually adhere to the Declaration of Establishment? And a lot of Israelis are, well, yeah, including those of us in the diaspora, but a lot of Israelis who are in the land have hopefully been watching Israelis in the diaspora and learning that voting for the incumbent has not worked for many of us including for those who voted for Obama. I didn't vote for Obama. I voted for McCain and Romney. Still, I think a lot of people have gotten tired of voting for the incumbent. I don't know whether you could call that incumbent syndrome, incumbent consistency, whatever you call it. The point being, just because Netanyahu's the incumbent doesn't mean that you have to go with what's there. And... Even an example reaching back to the 30s and 40s, since many compare this time to the 30s and 40s, it's like when people kept voting for FDR. The Depression got worse. The Holocaust, as if the Holocaust wasn't bad enough, got worse. And then the whole St. Louis incident, for lack of a better term, came up. And it wasn't until FDR died and Truman was given a chance when he was elected the second time, because the first time he took over for FDR, and then the second time he was elected, it wasn't until the second time that Truman was elected that things actually changed and got somewhere for some good. I mean, yeah, the World War II effort got started under FDR, but that's, of course, after the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, and after those who went off and fought with Canada's and England's armies got punished for being, basically for being traitors, although I have to question who the real traitors were in that. And the thing, too, is that once FDR died, pretty much, yeah, as I recall, I'm trying to remember the exact dates. I know August 2nd, 1945 was one of them, or was it August 6th? My point being, so... May 1945, August 1945, FDR was added away, had been an incumbent long enough, Truman was there, and Truman was the one who accepted the declaration of the state of Israel. FDR would not have, despite that he might have, had he lived, looked like he would have done it, but if you read the history about FDR, he was a known anti-Semite at some level, even if people wanted to pretend that they couldn't have known. And not only that, it's the same thing with Netanyahu, in a sense, except that he's anti-Zionist, because, hey, he almost gave 86% of the West Bank away. And not only that, he keeps giving and giving and giving to the Chledim, who never reciprocate, and to believe that Israel, in its present form, is a Tres Medina. So... Just think about that before you resign and say, oh, because Netanyahu's the incumbent, and we don't know who could take over Netanyahu's position, we might as well vote for the incumbent. So, for lack of a better term, you don't have to give in to incumbent syndrome or incumbency syndrome. Really vote for someone who's going to hold to the Declaration of Establishment and who's not going to give the him their way every time. And by the way, Netanyahu apparently did a really jerky ad called the BB Sitter, 
apparently that's what he wants to be to the Chaladim. He wants to be the babysitter slash the babysitter instead of making the Chaladim get off their tukkases and do something for Israel.